And hello everyone and welcome to The Precursors. Now, The Precursors here is a bit of a different game than what I normally play. This is not an adventure game. What this is, is this is a first person shooter, open world science fiction game. But it's also a game that is a little uncommon. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to get this game here in the US. And I love this game. This game has an aesthetic and a story and that sort of thing that is completely different than what you've seen in a lot of places. And so um, I just wanted to play it and share it so you can see what it's like too and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, as I said, the Precursors is a little hard to get. Um, it is a Russian game with all, the, all that that implies. And the only place I've ever actually seen it for sale here in the West is via Gamer's Gate. Now, part of the problem is once you get the game, you have to install not one, but two separate patches to actually make the game playable. You see, when they converted the game to English, they cut out all the Russian dialogue. But along with the Russian dialogue, they also cut out all the ambient sounds like gunfire or things like that. You know, things you might like to know are going on around you. So the first patch for the game restores all of that. And then the second patch puts the English dialogue back in. Because in the cutscenes, there are no subtitles. So without English dialogue, you have no idea what's going on. Now it's a fan patch, so some of the quality here is a little iffy. But hey, you can follow the story. And it's actually quite an interesting story. And, like I said, this is a first-person shooter, which means you'll be spending time running around with a automatic weapon shooting at raiders. But you can also pilot a starship and engage in dogfights. You can buy and sell cargoes and sell them between star systems. You get to pilot giant robots and mechs. You get to drive a vehicle around. It's all your usual open-world stuff. It's just in a science fiction environment like you've probably never seen before. And that's why I really enjoy it. Now, in full disclosure here, I did start a Let's Play of this several years ago. I got through maybe a dozen episodes, and then my computer died. I mean, literally died. And I just never got around to reinstalling the game. Because it's got a slightly annoying DRM phone home thing you have to go through to reinstall. And then there's that whole multiple patch thing where you have to download and reinstall these patches. And I just never got back to it. But somebody brought it up in the past week or so, and I started thinking about it going, you know, I'd really like to finish that sometime, so let's do a Let's Play out of it, and here we are. So anyway, here we are. I hope you enjoy it, and let's get started with The Precursors. And here we are in the introductory scene, and... As you can see already, it has its own little aesthetic and everything, and I hope you like Neon, because you're going to be seeing a lot of it. And here we come. Yes, things do not start off well for us immediately. See, even the starship has neon on it. And here's some of that fan dialogue I was talking about. Alex! Alex, are you alive? I think, yes. I'll check it out. Ah, damn. I'm alive, partially. Me too. But my arm hurts. And how could this have happened to us? Because you said the ship has passed through full technical testing, all systems work perfectly, and the probability of an accident was absolutely zero? A look, as a matter of fact. Wait, where is this new guy, Treese Crichton, or whatever his name is? Uh, I don't know. But maybe he was in the cabin. Oh shit, look at this. That creature is dragging Treese. Soldier, how are you? Stand up, Corporal. There's no need to wallow here. Is he winding him up? What was he doing? 
And the reason this is in the game proper finally. The reason we don't get a fancy set of battle dress yes, like they had is because we're a pilot, not a space marine. So why we're doing this training I am. Don't know. Now if you'll notice up at the top left, all that text up there is in English, but they're actually speaking Russian. And oops, there's a plant shooting at us. Let's see what we can do. Ah. Okay, did I get it? Yeah. And we're off to a great start here. Um, there's another plant back here, I bet. Yep. And it's... Whoops, it's not dead. Reload. Remember to reload. Okay. Um, there are a couple of space marines up here in front of us, and they seem to have had a not-so-good encounter with the planets themselves, but I don't know where they went. But there's another one behind. There it is. See it? I think we got it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. What did happen to those two space marines? Are they dead back here somewhere? It's a recedist killer plant. Well, I guess that explains a few things, but okay. Where am I? Oh, I'm going this way. And why are we even on this planet? What's what are we doing here? Place sure is dangerous, like something out of a nightmare. Careful, bugs, and he doesn't mean necessarily the six-legged kind either. Uh, one of the problems with this game is it tends to have a there's a memory leak somewhere. It tends to start going into slideshow mode and crash after a while. And there's a there it is. Okay, that's dead. Up. Ooh, all over my view screen. Sunflowers. What is that thing? Okay. Oh, there's something over here. Weapon crates take as much as you can carry. You don't need to tell me twice. Oh look, we have a rocket launcher. I'm sure we won't need that for any reason. Oh, there's another one up here. Let's not waste the rocket launcher right away. Oh, another bug! Shit. You have been perceived as a friend by the Empire. Okay, whoever they are, I guess they like people who kill bugs. what that weird sound was. Okay. Imperial ship has crash landed somewhere nearby. Okay. There's some. Hey! I thought you liked me. Guess we're not that good of a friend. Yeah. Okay. Those guys look like they're wearing battle dress. I'm like... That was probably a little close to me. But he's dead now. Um, there's one over there too. There's another one. There's grenades. Okay. Where'd he go? There he is. Hi. Rocket launcher. Somebody's still around. Oh, I got, got a grenade from somewhere. Up. Uh. Crap. Did I get him? I guess I got him. Okay. 
one rocket left. I hope there's more than one, not more than one soldier left. Oh, F you. All out of rockets. Now it's fine. Oh, what's that? Oh, I guess that's the crash ship. Oh, screw that. I'm not fighting a giant robot right now. Nope, sorry. Alright. Uh, yes, I guess somebody is still alive down there. They were shooting at me. Thanks for the help. Okay. Let's see what's in this cave that my mission seems to be sending me to. I'm sure. Okay, I give up. What is that? Seriously, what is that? What is that? No idea, sir. It's impossible. The training program doesn't allow that. Right there with Such you. an error can't... How's Crichton? The cadet feels fine. I'm observing a slight elevation of heartbeat rate. According to the readings, the cadet has stopped the execution of the program by his own strength of will. But that's not possible. Technically, no. But in light of recent studies, there is a theory about unique persons who have the ability to consciously influence even the more complicated quantum processes than those taking place in computer memory. Are you suggesting that he's... Take him out of stasis. When he comes around, tell him he got the full marks. The examination is over for today. Inform the other cadets they'll be taking the teamwork and survival and extreme conditions test tomorrow. Proceed. Yes, yes sir. sir. Cadet Tris Crichton was delighted to learn he's got the highest mark. Usually the graduates who got such results are assigned to Casilla, to the honorary service of the Elder Guard. But Tris was sent to Golden. Golden could hardly be called a planet, a hole on the edge of the universe. If not for Niftidium mining, nobody would have even heard of it. However, it was one of the last two planets belonging to the Amarn race. Over the last decades, this once mighty and powerful race has lost almost all of their possessions across the galaxy. Now, everything was run by either the Empire or the Democratic Union. I think by race they mean culture or civilization, not actual race. The only thing that Triss was glad for was that Ira was also assigned to Golden. Triss and Ira didn't expect anything special from Golden. They were confident that everything that awaited them were raider skirmishes in the desert and drunken brawls in the local bar. And you can decide which one of those is their job and which one they do for fun. Still, Triss Crichton's father used to serve on Golden. Triss didn't know much about him, but was hoping to find his father's old comrades in arms. Surely, they remembered Greg Crichton and could tell a few impressive tales about him. I'm sure they can. And that voice sounded almost French for a second there. Well, anyway, here we are on the planet Golden. And there's another planet over there. And this is the Starport. Um, we apparently just came in on that little shuttle. It's hard to tell. There's a couple of them floating around. Um, anyway... This is the start of the game proper, as I'm sure you just realized what we just went through was the tutorial introduction. So we'll get to that in a minute, or get beyond that in a little bit. But I think I'm going to stop here for today, because this is right before getting into the game proper, and I don't want to run this thing out too long for the first game. So anyway, welcome to the Precursors! Until next time, I am Dennis, I am Can't Stop the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time. Bye.